or we can give online at myntc.org slash junctioncityks. That's our website. There's an online giving button there or on Cash App. I know a lot of us have Cash App. It makes it very easy. Dollar sign NTCC Junction City. Most of all today on this Resurrection Sunday, how many are thankful for Jesus? Let's receive a good offering as unto the Lord. And if you had not had an opportunity to pay your tithe, there's a tithe almost in the back of the pew. And God bless you. Brother Jim, sir, would you please pray, ask God to bless this Easter offering. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for your giving, and may God bless you abundantly for it. I'd like to read to you this morning from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28. It's really good to see each and every one of you in the household. Also, before I read, I'll be praying for those that are deployed and uh, those that are gone overseas. And some of you know what it's like to be gone during the holidays, so I'll be praying for them. Also, I received a message from Brother Duhai today. And uh, he's been fighting over there in the Ukraine as one of the Ukraine uh, volunteer forces over there, actual fighting and very, very dangerous. And he told me last week or maybe the week before that he was getting ready to go into a very dangerous situation. But I got a message from him today and a picture and he's doing well and he sends Easter greetings. All right. So pray for Brother Duhai. He's been over there a year fighting and he sent me different videos. He's told me different things. It's very, very real. And it's very, very dangerous, but he's alive, so praise God. Amen? But there's somebody else that's alive as well. Yes, sir. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. Praise God, right? As he said, come and see where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. And then also from Matthew 28, verse 18, skipping down, where it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I'd like to preach this morning for just a little while on the title of a message, The Celebration of Easter. The Celebration of Easter. Reverend Palmer, sir, please stand and pray.
Amen. We know that we've gathered here on this Easter morning to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? It's not a sad story today because you know what? Jesus is alive. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things are going to happen today. And, you know, many, many will find themselves today in a place of worship and honor to our God. But they will leave that place of worship without ever really knowing Jesus Christ in a reality. Now, if you come to church here any length of time, you know that I'm going to tell you that we need a reality in Jesus, correct? And, and I, my prayer is that somewhere across the world today, that people gather to honor the celebration of the resurrection of Christ, that most of all, they will know Jesus in a reality. Praise God. A lot of things are going to happen in our nation today. It's going to be the big dinners. Now, are we having dinner after church? I don't know what you're going to do, but we're not having a church dinner, all right? Last night, somebody invited, invited someone to service today, and the first thing they said was, uh, uh, are we, are we going to celebrate the Lord? Are we going to sing special songs? They said, are you going to serve lunch? Well, you know, it's like in the Bible, where Jesus fed the multitudes. They were there for the loaves and the fishes. After they were done eating, they were gone. I'm not against serving lunch, but if we have lunch today, you had to go buy your own lunch today. Amen? Have your big dinners. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with the big dinners. They're going to have their Easter egg hunts. They're going to have their family gatherings. They're going to have their special church services. But listen to this. The sad thing is that the day will end. The people will go back to their homes, go to sleep, arise on Monday morning, forgetting about God until the next holiday. You know what? We cannot allow ourselves to forget. We cannot allow ourselves to forget all that God has done for us. But people will continue on with their life and the pursuit of their desires of this life without ever stopping to think about the life to come. There was a reason that Jesus Christ came. There was a reason that he was crucified for us. And there was a reason that he was risen again. And you know what that reason is? That you and I might have eternal life. Amen? We need to remember. And I really believe there's multitudes of people they're looking for truth. They're looking for happiness. But they're doing it in all the wrong places. Y'all remember that old country western song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? All you country western aficionados. And that's the world today. They're looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for happiness in all the wrong places. And, and, and they're looking to the world. But I'm going to tell you right now, the world out there without God does not satisfy the longing in our hearts and our lives, right? And the Bible does tell us, for what shall it profit a man if he gains a whole world and loses his own soul? What good is it? You know, I have come to the place. I believe that God will bless us if we put God first. Can I get a witness? And I'm going to tell you right now, on this wonderful Easter morning, that we serve a God of blessing. All right, now you may not think that, but I serve a God of blessing. How many here today serve a God of blessings? And so today we've assembled here to celebrate the power of Easter and his amazing love. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't remember anything I say today, remember this one thing. And that is that Jesus loves you right now. I, some of you I, I maybe just met recently or I don't know what's going on in your life I don't know what you're facing I don't know what you're encountering but there's one thing I do know that here we are and I'm going to tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ loves you and he cares for you well I don't I, you know this is kind of different church than what I'm used to it's alright Jesus loves you amen how many are glad that Jesus loves you right now Easter would have no significance. Easter would have no power or significance without Jesus Christ and the wonderful, amazing love that he has shown to us. Now, God has shown his love to us. Amen? For God so loved the world, right? That he gave his only begotten son. We'll talk about it in just a little while. And so today, my desire is that we want you to experience the power and the love of our living Lord, and I want you to be able to celebrate with us. Amen? No sad stories to tell. So we can celebrate the fact. First of all, the power of his coming showed the power of his love. So I already started it in John chapter 3, verse 16. 
For God so loved the world. God so loved you. Amen. I see you here online that Gage. Gage is watching the service today. God bless you, Gage. Well, who, who in the world is Gage? Gage is a young man that I baptized last Wednesday night. He called me on the phone. He said, can, I, can you baptize me? I said, sure. So we worked it out. And so Wednesday night we baptized him. Amen. And he's out of town right now. So God bless you, Gage. For God so loved the world. God so loved us. God so loved you. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right, so we know that God showed his love to us by sending us his son. And there's no reason, none whatsoever, for you and I, men and women, to be groping around in this life without Jesus Christ. Everything has been provided. We read in the book of Luke, chapter 19 and verse 10. He said... For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now that was us, folks. We were lost. We were on our way to hell. We had nowhere to turn to. But God loved us so much in all of our hard-headed ways, in all of our stubborn ways. He loves us even now when we're stubborn. I know, I know, I know that nobody here falls into that category today. How many of you have ever been hard-headed? Uh-oh, that's all of us, right? Preacher, have you ever been hard-headed? We're not talking about me right now. We're talking about you. First time my wife wants to come to church with me this morning. He came to seek us out. And while we were living in sin and being ungodly, he died for us. And he loved us so much. And he loves you so much that he came to give us life and that more abundantly. I already told you that God wants to bless us. And the thing about it is, yes, he wants to bless us, but what about getting a blessing today? So many times we talk about blessings, but you know what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about you, but I need a blessing right now today in this service. Amen? We need a blessing right now. But we know, even though we know that Jesus came to save us, we know that he came to deliver us, we know that he came to give us eternal life, but many men and women fail to give him their life. Christ gave us all that he had that we may have life. And really, you think about it, how sad that it is that people, they profess to know the Lord. They say they know Jesus in reality. But yet they are so far from him that the worship of God is nothing but a formality to them. Easter Sunday, thank God for Easter Sunday. But Easter Sunday is nothing but a formality to many people today. And, but you know what? I don't want it to be just a formality. I've come to the house of God. Well, you have to be here. It's Easter. I, I had a choice to be here whether or not. Amen? Well, you have to be here. You're the pastor. No, I want to be here because I love the Lord. Amen? And I don't want, I don't want Easter Sunday just to be a formality in my life, but I want it to be a celebration of life, a, a celebration of the love that our God has shown to each and every one of us. And today, how many came to celebrate the life of Jesus Christ? It's not a formality. You think about it, the merchants, they make a, a fortune off the so-called people of God. I didn't come today to look at the new clothes. Now, if you got new clothes, praise God. I'm, cl I'm glad for that. Man, someone just told me recently they couldn't come to church because they didn't have the right kind of clothes. I said, I don't care, just come with clothes. Amen? That's not the kind of revelation that we want. We didn't come to catch up on the latest gossip. But we've come to praise. And we've come to worship the Savior that came for us and to celebrate his resurrection. And I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is alive. Amen? Our worship to God should not become a formality, but rather it ought to become a way of life. Can someone say amen to that? It should be the way that we are. God, I love you. God, I worship you. And the Bible tells us that we are to give thanks to his name. It's good to give thanks to God. For we know that every good gift and every perfect gift come down from the Father of lights. And now not because we receive something from God, but I want to praise him because he loves me when I'm unlovable. He has forgiven me when I had sin in my life. And when I was broken, he renewed me and restored me. A dead God cannot 
not do that. Oh, but a God who is alive and alive forevermore has the power to do something in our hearts and in our lives. I'm talking about the power of his coming and the power of his love. Let me give you some wonderful news right now. Because he came, we can be saved from our sins. I want you to know every one of us needed a savior. Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Praise God. You say, well, preacher, that don't mean nothing to me. It means something to me. And even now, thank God for his forgiving power. Thank God for his goodness. And I'm telling you right now, there's not a one of us in here who have not messed up since we've given our life to God. And that means we go back to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I repent. And the blood of Jesus Christ is still flowing to make us clean and to make us whole. It's all because Jesus is alive. And Jesus can do this in our hearts, in our lives. And praise God, because of the power of his coming, you and I can be delivered. Amen. Bible said in Galatians chapter 1, and verse 4, who gave himself our sins for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our father you read that how can you not but to be humbled in the sight of God he died for us he gave himself for us for our sins why he came to deliver us we don't have to be held in bondage any longer whatever that is or to that bad habit amen we don't have to be in bondage any longer to that sin praise God he came to deliver us that's why we can celebrate on a Sunday morning Actually, I believe we can celebrate like this year round. I don't have to wait for Easter. <laughs> Excuse me. And because of the power of his coming, a way, listen to this, has been made for us to be healed. Now, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus speaking here, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Here in this one verse of scripture really is the gospel in this one verse. Christ came. Pastor, I'm not poor, but we were poor in spirit. We were poor spiritually. We are broken hearted. I'm glad that our God can take that broken life and that broken heart and put it back together. I'm going to tell you right now that Jesus can rise again on the third day from the dead. He can put our lives back together again. If he has the power over death, hell, and the grave, he has power over that broken heart in your life. And I don't know what you're facing, but let me tell you something. God has something better than super glue, if you will. He has something better than duct tape, if you will. I'm telling you, he has the blood of Jesus uh, that can put our broken lives back together again uh, to deliver us. We are captives to sin in the world. He's recovered. We were blinded by sin. He set at us at liberty to this we can rejoice uh, because he is alive. We can celebrate in the love and the power of our risen Savior. And then we can celebrate the fact that the power of his death displayed his amazing love. Matthew 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Christ shed his blood for us. The Bible also tells us that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. I mentioned it already. We know that he endured the shame and the reproach of the cross for us. You know what? Jesus was not guilty. We're the guilty ones. The only thing that he's guilty of was love for us. He was mocked. He was spit upon. He yanked out his beard. He pierced his side. They made fun of him. The Bible tells us he went like a lamb to the slaughter. He said not a word. He didn't have to die upon that cross. He could have called for legions of angels to come and rescue him. 
But that's not what he did. Because of his love for you and I, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How many are thankful for that this morning? The crown of thorns was placed upon his head in mockery to his divine royalty. And all these things that I've listed here today, we have Easter today because of this. He could have never risen again unless he first died. He did all of this that you and I might have life. Wow, what a wonderful display of his amazing love for you and I. We can celebrate that amazing love. He gave us all. So I wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He gave us all so that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He gave us all so that a way was made for every one of us to come to life. There's no reason, there's no reason for any of us to go around in bondage to the world or to sin because Jesus has set us free. And we need to realize this in our lives as we live for God and, and things happen in our life. As Satan comes and tries to cloud our minds and our hearts, say, wait a minute, I don't have to live that way because Jesus has set me free. And the Bible tells us, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen? Be set free. Be set free today in this Easter service. Say, Pastor, there's no hope for me. There is hope. There is hope today. It's hope in Jesus Christ. And if Jesus did it for me, Jesus can do it for you. We no longer have to live dead in our sins because he came to pay the price for our sin. He died so that we would not have to taste death. Oh, well, we're going to die physically one of these days. But we're not talking about an eternal death and eternal separation from the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. He did this that we may be reconciled to the Lord. And we can be free, we can be made free by the death of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So guess what? We're free! Man, that means we can rejoice! Sometimes when people get out of the military, they think they're free, they rejoice. There's something wonderful about that DD-214. Can I get a witness there? Say, oh, pastor, I'm striving for my DD-214. Wonderful. Let's strive to go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Celebrate the fact, number three, the power of his resurrection showed his amazing love. Luke chapter 24 and verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Here we are today, so many years later, and the message is still the same. He is risen. He is risen. He is alive. Isn't that why we're here today? To celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. I'm going to tell you right now, we don't serve a dead God. Christ alive then and Christ alive now. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. No, 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 preacher, calm down. Don't get so excited. No, 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 no. I'm, I want you to know my God is alive. He's alive. That means that we can be alive. Oh, praise God. Man, how can that not but excite you? It's sad. It's sad that there's a lot of people serving a dead God in a dead fashion. Many people serve the cross but not the one that died upon that cross. If you notice up there, he's not up there, is he? They took him down and put him in the tomb. Well, he's not there, but he's not in the tomb either. Oh, praise God. Where is he? Right now, he's sitting in the right hand of the throne of God, making intercession for you and I. He's right on time. I believe he's walking the aisles of the sanctuary right now. He's saying, I want to bless you. I want to do something in your life. And you know what? We don't have to serve a dead God in a dead fashion. Amen. Amen. True Christians serve a resurrected Savior every day. You know what? We don't have a religion today. Right? 
but we have a reality in serving a real God. And I really want you to know that it is possible. It is possible to have a reality in serving Jesus Christ. I find over the years, in the couple years that I've been preaching, I found that as I preach, I didn't say anything about my age today, Elizabeth. I found that as I preach, happy Easter to you. You too, George. I tell men and women about this, about this freedom and reality in God. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear about it. They want all these extracurricular activities in church, which they're fine in their right place. Things are fine, but they do not take the place of Jesus. A lot of things, like I already said, will happen today in churches, and I'm not against those things. But the thing about it, that's not what it's all about. It's not about who has the, the prettiest backdrop, and, and all those things are fine in their right place. But what it's about is lifting up Jesus Christ, the one that died for us. That's what it's about. So understand what I'm saying. I'm not against certain things, but that's not the focal point. The focal point today is Christ. And you tell people they don't want to hear it. In the book of Luke, we, we find that when the women told the disciples of the resurrection, it said, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Now, if anybody was to believe, they should have believed. It didn't seem real. Same is true in our life today. You tell people the true meaning of Easter, how that Christ came and how that he died for our sins, how he rose again on the third day, and they think it's a fairy tale. I want you to know this morning that it is not a fairy tale. I'm glad that I know the Lord right now. Amen. He rose just like he said that he would. Jesus said, I am he that liveth. And he was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. All right, preacher. You say that Jesus is alive. How do you know? How do you know that he's alive? Well, since you asked. Theoretically. I know what Jesus has done in my life. Oh, hallelujah. And you can say and you can believe what you want to believe. And you may say it's not true, but I know in a reality you cannot take it away from me. I know that I was dead in my sins. I know I was on my way to hell. I know me. Amen. But I also know the night that I gave my life to Jesus. And Jesus made a difference in my life when everything else was not. I tried all kinds of different things. It didn't work. Oh, but one night I gave my life to the Lord. I met this risen Savior and Jesus made a change in my life the world didn't give it to me the world can't take it away I, I tried I tried all kinds of things and I looked and, and nothing can produce a change in the life of an individual like Jesus can and there's others that can testify the same thing that's how I know it's real that's how I know that God is real because of the experience that I have so well well, I tried it. Don't try religion. Try Jesus. Amen? I'm going to tell you again on this glorious Easter morning, Jesus is still alive. Jesus is alive. We have something to celebrate. He's alive in my heart as well. That's why I know. How many, how many know this morning that Jesus is alive? And then we can celebrate lastly. I told you I wouldn't keep you long. You gotta get home to your ham. Sorry. We can celebrate the fact that his power and his love is able to change your life today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 17, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. How many want to be blessed by God? How many need a blessing right now? The key to the blessings of God is to be in Christ. He said there in that verse, therefore, if any man be in Christ. Now that's the key. We need to get Jesus in our life. 
Amen? And we need to be in him. I'm going to tell you today that whatever that you have need of, that need can be met in Christ. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. On this wonderful, blessed Easter morning, we're here in the middle of a society in a world that has a lot of needs. And, and we were talking right before church with Jack and Ron out on the porch. Our world really needs help right now. And, it starts, and, and Jack made a statement. He said, man, we just need to do something. It starts with us. And we need to pray. And we need to seek God. And I'm telling you, we get Jesus formed in the hearts and lives of men and women. That is the answer for the world today. Amen. And that's why we go out soul winning. And I think this Easter season, we put, I don't know how many, I mean, over a thousand flyers on doors. We bought Facebook ads. And, and if people don't come, maybe there's a seed that is planted somewhere. That's why we go. And that's why we drive around and invite people to church. Because we want Jesus to be formed in the hearts and the lives of men and women. It's not to lift up me, but to lift up Jesus Christ. Christ, the Son of Almighty God. And if I believe we do this, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. Amen? Amen? God can meet the needs. And let me tell you something. I don't know what you're facing in your life. I don't know the battles that you face. I don't know your trials. I don't know your situations. But there's one thing I do know is that Jesus is the one that can make the change in your life. We all have things that we go through. Don't, don't forsake God, my friends. Do not leave God out of the picture. It's time to turn to the Lord. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, he said, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Christ is the answer. Why? Do you think he came in the first place? We can go all the way back to Christmas, if you will. How he came to be born, to die. And here we are at Easter time celebrating his resurrection. Last week may not have been so good. It looked dark. It looked bleak. They, what, they crucified him. They put him in a tomb. But on that third day, he rose again. Why? He did it not for himself, but for us. So that we can make our lives better. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when the Lord wants to be real to you. Come to the instruments, please. Today is the day when you can, for the very, maybe very first time in your life, Experience the power of a living Savior that is able to change your life for the better. The Bible says, John chapter 6, verse 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. See, well, Pastor, I, I can't come to God because I've messed up too bad. God doesn't want me. Oh, you're so wrong. God does want you. And God wants to bless you. And God wants to forgive you. Well, I've messed up too many times. It doesn't matter. God loves you. Today, why don't you come and let me introduce you to Jesus Christ, the living, risen Savior of the world. Celebrate the power of Easter, the power of his amazing love. You know what? It's time to experience that love and let God do something in our lives.